So today we're in 3.6. The title is a little bit scarier or fancier than it's going to be. Uh, so this is called implicit differentiation. Uh, maybe I can make sense of the title a, a touch. A differentiation is just a synonym word for doing the derivative. So instead of the phrase doing the derivative, that's called differentiation. Implicit versus explicit. Uh, do you know in English the difference between implicit versus explicit? Implicit's like inside, explicit's like outside. Yeah, explicit is just like right in your face. So if you had a, an album with explicit lyrics, you know, that, there's some stuff that's right in your face. Uh, the DJ is going to be muting those out at the prom if it's, uh, you know, DJ AD is at the table. Uh, imp explicit is just sort of out there. Implicit is sort of in there. So we're trying to do a derivative, and there's something that's kind of like in there. So here's what's in there. Sometimes it's just not very convenient to get the y alone. Okay. Every derivative you've done to this point of the year, I gave you an equation that was y equals whatever. Sometimes it was little, sometimes it was quite large. Uh, but it was always y equals, and you did the derivative. Sometimes the y is in there. Uh, so we have a thing called implicit differentiation. Now, could you get this y alone with your algebra skills? Yeah. Okay. And what would have to happen if you got this y alone with your algebra skills? Subtract x to the other side. You would, and then more ugly, you'd have to do the root. The root. And doing derivatives of roots is probably not your favorite thing. Uh, if we tried to do this to get this y alone, is it humanly possible to do it? Probably. Um, could you do it? I don't think so, because I don't think I know how to do that off the top of my head. I, I think I'd have to do a little bit of research and sit down to think, if I've got a y here, I'm good with that. But if, if there were a y here, I'm good with that. Uh, I can get rid of trig stuff. I can get rid of multiplication. But to get rid of both of those, I'm not sure how that will even happen off the top of my head. Uh, this I could do. It would involve like doing the quadratic formula, but with instead of a, b, and c being numbers, a, b, and c would be x's and numbers. Okay, so that would be a drag. So like, could it be done? Yes. Ugly. <laughs> Maybe not even. I don't know. Um, so when you can't get the y alone easily, there's a thing called implicit differentiation. So you're going to do the derivatives as usual. Okay, so the derivative of x squared is going to be 2x. And then here's going to be a twist. The derivative of y squared, we're going to do two y. But I'm going to leave a y derivative symbol, a y prime, that's like multiplying that. And then that's going to equal zero. Every time you do a y derivative, leave one of those buggers. And now our goal is to get this alone. This is now an unknown thing representing y's derivative. We just need to do our algebra life and get that all by itself. The answer is going to still look like the answers have always looked. y prime equals whatever y prime equals. It's just going to be a little bit bigger answer maybe than what you're used to. So how would you get this alone? Six. Subtract the 2x, I'd agree, so that's out of there. Then what would you do with this? Divide by 2y, so that's out of there. And then clean that up a touch. Instead of negative 2x on top of 2y, negative x on negative x on top of y cancel the 2, so we're good. So previously, all your y derivative answers had only x's in them. Now they have x's and y's, and we're okay with that. Question about that point, so. So we'll scroll over here, do the derivative of this. Not quite. 
Um, the roof of the Where? Right, so that's better. Not perfect, but better. Another one with the cosine. Also, another one with the cosine y. Now it's best. That's as good as it's going to get. Okay, so each time you do a y derivative, make sure you leave one of those y prime deals. So, question about getting to there. Now, this is a little harder to do the algebra on because uh, we've got two of those. So if we have two of those, and we're trying to have one of those and have it be alone, does anybody have a suggestion? Divide everything by y equal. You can't divide everything by it because then it would be on the bottom of this. So it would get rid of those, but dividing would get rid of two of them, but create a third, and the new one we created is on the bottom, and it's harder to solve for stuff on the bottom. Get them both on one side. You would. Okay, so I'm going to bring it over here because the one is already kind of semi alone on that side. I'll bring this whole package over and leave the 2x where it's at. So get them together on the same side is a good move. And factor out the y1. Factor it out, yeah. So we'll factor out that y derivative, which would leave. Two minus two so Agree. And then your grand total answer for the derivative? Two x over two minus two so Agree. Question about number two before we take on problem three, and then we'll call it a day. So from there and up. Derivative of this, 2x minus, I'm going to put that on hold for a second. How about this one? Agree. Zero. One of the biggest mistakes on this I've seen historically are people that get in too big of a hurry and don't remember that the derivatives of numbers always make zeros. I've seen a lot of these problems where the 7 is left standing or that original one where it equaled 1, where the equals 1 was left standing. When there's numbers, make sure you disappear those into zeros. That would be probably mistake number one. Mistake number two is what I left hanging with this. How are we going to need to do the derivative of this? The product. So I'm going to do a set of parentheses because we're subtracting anything that has to do with the product. If this had been a minus 4, I'd have left a minus 4 sitting there. And I'd have done the product rule just on the variable pieces. I think that would make life a touch simpler, maybe. Um, how's the product rule going to go? First times the derivative of the second. Okay, so how will that look? Yes. X times Y's derivative, yup. <laughs> and that's times x's derivative, which is a 1. Mm -hmm. You only leave the y prime when you did y's derivative. Just because you wrote a y here doesn't mean you have to leave one of those y primes. You only leave the y prime when y had its derivative done. So we did the derivative of y on that. When we did the product rule, only one of those pieces involved the derivative of a y thing. Clean that up a touch. So something like 2x minus this piece minus the other piece plus 2yy y prime equals 0. In case you haven't caught this trend yet, these very frequently, ordering on always, turn out to be fraction answer. Uh, and if you didn't make this connection yet, basically everything that starts off with the y prime is going to end up on the bottom while the things that aren't having y primes are the things that end up on the top. So if we're trying to get this and this alone, we would need this to ship out of there and become negative 2x. We need this to ship out of there and become plus y. Would the signs change on these things with the y primes? If the things without the y primes did a sign switch to get them out of there, 
will the things with the Y primes get assigned switch? No. Because what we would do if I did show up all the steps, we'd again factor the GCF, which leaves the signs alone, divide that whole bundle to the bottom, that would leave the signs alone. What you'd end up on the bottom with this would be a negative x plus a 2y with the signs the way they were all along. Question about that? Could you have turned the original thing into x minus y squared and then did change it? No. If this were a 2, yes. Uh, it, it doesn't quite factor, but close. Here's another thing. If you check the answer in the back on anything, if all of your signs are wrong, you're actually right. So if they decided for some reason, if doing the solving they just took things to opposite sides of what we did, every sign would have ended up being an opposite sign. So if you look in the back and it seems like every sign is wrong, it's you're actually just as right as them if every as long as every sign is consistent because I could come in right now in Fraction World back to seventh grade, the name changer machine said, if I multiply the top and the bottom by the same thing, I'm good. So I could multiply the top by negative one. As long as I multiply the bottom by negative one, all the signs are different, it's still the same. It's just changed the way it looked, but it didn't really change it. That's our day. So we're working this page off of 174. Uh, we're here two days. Tomorrow I'll add on a little bit of a tidbit of information, 236. Um, today is mainly, the homework is mainly still chain rule based. Uh, there's not a ton of the new questions, but on 174, we're working 1 to 22 today. 1 to 16 aren't this. 1 to 16 is just chain rule continuing, or older than that even continuing. It's like product rule chain rule, no quotient rules, uh, but 1 to 16 is old. So if you sit down to do 174, you're like, wait, how do I apply this new thing here? No, you don't. Uh, 1 to 16 is set up, y equals whatever. It's just kind of a review of what's been going on. 17 to 22 is where the new stuff kicks in. Uh, so 17 to 22 is this. Tomorrow, again, I'll add in two tidbits. Uh, we'll do second derivatives using this process. Uh, and then there's a new word to introduce you to. It's a retread from physics. We had tangent lines, and then there's another kind of lines that put in a brief appearance in this section that we did have in physics, but I don't want to spoil the surprise. So uh, we're two days here. Um, today's, what, Monday? So one day away, homework's due. This one, two days away, there's another homework due in the book. Three days away, we'd be to Wednesday is. Uh, Thursday, you'd have a sheet due. I'll give you a sheet tomorrow once I've added on my other tidbits, and then we're looking at a quiz that's isolated just in 3, 5, 3, 6. Uh, 3, 7, and 3, 8 are yet to come, um, but there's a quiz that just covers the two sections, the chain rule and this implicit differentiation. Question about feature events at all? All right, that's a wrap.